that makes you think that kids church is pretty great. Uh, Romans chapter 1. If you're here, do you need a Bible? Anybody yes. here need a Bible? Uh, Luke. Uh, Luke will help you. If you've got a Bible by you, and uh, there we go. Just raise your hand if you need a Bible. Make sure everybody has one. Please open to Romans chapter 1. Someday, someday we're going to reverse the whole plot. We're going to have the kids sit down, and the rest of us are going to high five and run out the door. <laughs> and then we're going to come out afterward and we're holding all kinds of candy in our hands. That's what happens with the kids' church in Fort Lauderdale. The kids come out of there with all kinds of loot. So, anyway. I need to do that. I, I keep thinking someday I'm going to get a deal like I'm Snickers or Milky Way candy bars. And, and I'm going to turn the adults loose into the kids' church afterward, holding candy bars. It would be like our one day of revenge. So, yeah. Are you in Romans chapter 1? I want to read just verse 21. And all I want to look at today is a very, very simple truth. But I'm going to ask for some help as well. Uh, with looking up some references. So before we read our text in Romans chapter 1, could I get someone to, to look up Philippians 4 and verse 6 for me, please? Could somebody do that? Just look up a Philippians. Okay, okay. you've got Philippians 4, 6. And then uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 7. Uh, Lee. And then Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2. Who, else? Who can I get for that one? Charlie? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now you're there, and uh, just just want to, uh, today is really, appropriately so, it's really a time of the year when we focus on Thanksgiving. Now we'll have our praise and pie service following the Sunday school, and we'll have a, a short, just a short message uh, about Thanksgiving as well uh, during that. But it's really appropriate for us as believers to align ourselves sometimes with the right mindsets that a Christian ought to have. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful for Thanksgiving and what it represents. I'm thankful for Thanksgiving in the sense that we celebrate it as a nation. It's a nationally celebrated holiday. But the holiday and what it means actually is a recognition of God. It's a recognition of our obligation or our debt that we owe of gratitude to God. And I'll tell you something, Thanksgiving is very, very special to me as a believer to know that I live in a nation which nationally says we need to take time and be grateful to God. That's really special, isn't it? I mean, that really is, is something that's very, very meaningful. We'll look at uh, some of the significance of that in our praise service in a little while. But that, it means a lot to me for that. But I'll tell you what else is that I need to, I need to praise the Lord. I need to give thanks to, to God. And when I do that, you know, you can't grumble and, and praise at the same time. You can't be upset or angry or bitter and thankful. It's just Thanksgiving displaces so many things that eat us up or burn us up and that get us, that make us miserable. And you know, it's really interesting, Thanksgiving and misery don't really, the very concept of what Thanksgiving uh, Eucharistes, I give thanks. The giving of thanks and anything that has to do with the wrong attitude cannot coexist. There are a few principles, there are a few truths in life that go along with that. But friend, let me just tell you something. You get sorted about this here today. Maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe you're struggling with your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings. Uh, whatever the emotion or feeling is, thanksgiving could be the solution to your problem. And that really is the truth. Okay, so I'm going to read Romans 1.21. That's the verse that we'll come back to. Uh, but we're going to just look at thank it just looks at a simple study on Thanksgiving today, and I think that it'll be profitable for all of us here. Uh, in verse 21, the Bible qualifies the phrase about people being without excuse for not believing in God. This way. Because that when they knew God. They glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Father, please help us today to just get this simple nugget, this truth, that is an attitude of a person who is 
destined for judgment. And Lord, help us to just see how opposite it is for a person who's thankful. Teach us this truth, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You ever met somebody really out of sorts, really upset? Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm a, a solutions personality. If you come to me and you tell me about a problem, I'm going to try to figure out something to do about the problem. And But one of the things I, I have to be real about in life is that I realize some people want to have problems. In other words, maybe they don't necessarily want the problem, but they also don't want the solution to the problem, which to me translates as they like their problem or they prefer their problem at least to the solution for the problem. You know what I'm talking about? You ever met somebody like that? You ever met somebody who was angry and you thought that if they're, if you could pacify their anger, if you could come up with a reason uh, to get them to not be angry, if you could fix the problem they say they're angry about, then they won't be angry anymore, but you find out they're an angry person. That's why they're angry. Uh. It isn't necessarily what caused the anger. That's just the symptom for the day or the symptom for the hour or whatever the time is. An angry person's angry and wishes to be so, actually. Um, I have found... Uh, that people, generally speaking, generally speaking, reflect the attitude they want to have. Now, feelings come from from circumstances sometimes, don't they? Can we say feelings are sometimes circumstantial? You ever not feel like giving thanks? Yeah. Sure. Some mornings I don't wake up feeling like, man, give thanks. Uh, and most mornings I actually do. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, I feel like I'm privileged. I feel like my life is way better than I deserve. I know it is. And uh, as long as I'm realistic, but sometimes when I'm grumbling or upset about something or I'm bothered about something, sometimes it, the reality of things just hits me. I think, what are you upset about? You know, it's always petty things, aren't it? Isn't it normally that really frustrate us? You know, big th I found that in, in life. Major events in life don't bother me. Like catastrophes, generally speaking, I'm just like, wow, that's a bummer. Oh, well. You know, but little things just annoy me and get me out of sorts. And uh, I find that Thanksgiving and wrong attitudes cannot coexist. But, but sometimes our feelings are circumstantial, aren't they? And this morning, this morning in our service, uh, we had several people that got bad news. So this morning, you know, Brother John got a call during Sunday school that somebody in his home church, their... Uh, a, a family in his home church, their son had been killed in a motorcycle accident. They found out during church this morning. And, um, wow. You know, I, I'm not going to say to Brother John, Brother John, why don't, you, why don't you give thanks for us right now? In other words, his feelings certainly are, it, it's not that he can't, we can find things to give thanks for in a situation like that, can't we? But it, it's not as though, uh, sometimes your circumstances affect your feelings, don't they? A couple of years ago, it just seemed like every time I got a phone call from somebody, it was to tell me that someone I knew had been killed or died or something had happened. And it just seemed like it was just a rough year. It just seemed like every at every turn there was something. And, and I was able to give thanks through that, but I'll just tell you something. The way I felt about giving thanks uh, was different than, you know, when that's the focus. In other words, there, were just, there are distractions. And we could, this evening or this afternoon, we could define a difference or draw a difference between something that distracts us from feeling like giving thanks and being unthankful. I'm not saying they're the same. Does everybody understand the distinction that I've made there? I'm not saying, hey, listen, if you don't feel like giving thanks, if that isn't your first impulse, then, you know, it's sinful or it is the sort of thing that is going to lead you to the consequences that we, uh, if we were to read further in Romans 1, that would happen. But today I will say to you that not being thankful, the deliberate choice of ingratitude, not being thankful, my friend, is one of the things ultimately that leads people to hell. That's what the text in the Scripture says. I'd like whoever has Philippians 4, 6. Could you read it for me, please? Okay. Matter of fact, read verses 1 through 6, will you? Okay. Read verses 1 through 6. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Yodius and beseech Synthi that they be of the same mind in the Lord. 
And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be, be made known unto God. Okay, so do you see the mindset that a believer is supposed to have? I want to say to you first of all today that there are right attitudes or there are commanded and expected attitudes that a believer ought to have. Let me put it this way. Any person who has come to the understanding that Jesus died on the cross because of their sin, first of all, understood why Jesus died. Why did Jesus die on the cross? What? To save the world. Yeah, he died for the sins of the whole world. He died because if we were to accept the penalty for our sin, we'd be God's enemies forever. And Jesus took God's wrath for us. His death was a substitution for us. And because of his death, salvation was freely offered. If you've received Jesus as your Savior, the, the greatest fear that anyone has, which is death, is taken care of. Death is separation from God. Death is separation from God in two senses. Not just the physical death where we lose this temporary life, but death is the separation from God where literally we're in a place of judgment. Hell. That's a serious matter. And you know, it's the biggest, it's the biggest problem everybody has. It's the greatest problem anyone has. And if you've received Jesus, by the way, it's easy to receive Jesus. It's a, it's a decision. The gift is offered. Jesus died for your sin. And salvation is just offered as whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you could understand you, you're you have conviction for your sin and uh, you recognize God should judge me, but you could just take your sin and you could ask God to place it on Jesus. Say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I'm asking you to save me because of what Jesus did. And you know, the Bible says it's as simple as that. I mean, literally looking is faith in Jesus that saves us. If you've done that, if you've done that, the biggest problem most people have, the biggest problem anyone has, is already taken care of. Now, I'm not trying to trivialize today. I'm not trying to say no one is going through anything. I know people are going through things. Uh, you know, a majority of people married and single struggle with loneliness. Now, how many people I talk to, and they will tell me, you know, it's difficult being alone. And that's, I'm not saying that that's not a big deal. It is. There are answers. There are solutions for it. Uh, people will tell me about loss that they have or concerns they have or uh, even pain physical pain. I know some people that honestly, they're in, in terrible chronic pain. I can't relate to that very well. I've been through pain, but it's always come to an ending. I know people are just in constant, continual pain. And it's very difficult in some circumstances to be able to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, many contexts of the Scripture about thanksgiving are giving thanks always in all things for everything. And they're talking about Tribulation, they're talking about hardships. So you and I do have a reason, and we could go into that, to be thankful for the things in life that don't seem good, but yet we know that they work out ultimately to teach us patience. They work ultimately for God's good. And could not all of us testify that the circumstances that we've undergone that have tested us, we wouldn't want to go through them again. But we could say, I'm glad. There are many things I've gone through. I'd say, I don't want to do that again, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad for what happened as a result of God's goodness. And so you can know God's character enough to be thankful even while going through something like that. But according to Philippians chapter 4, it's commanded that one of the things that ought to be a continual attitude for a believer is thank being thankful or worshiping God with thanksgiving. Matter of fact, do a study on just thanks and its derivatives in the Scripture. And you'll find there are literally hundreds of references in the Bible to being thankful. It's an important biblical scriptural concept. Now, here's some application for us. Be thankful. <laughs> you say, Pastor, that seems like oversimplification. No. See, you know, thankfulness, it, it, uh, 
it displaces ingratitude. Thankfulness it displaces sadness. Thankfulness uh, displaces anger. Thankfulness cannot coexist with many wrong attitudes, and therefore it's commanded in us to give thanks. You know, it's, you cannot pray to God and uh, complain to God. You can't pray and say, God, this life is terrible, so give me some. You're not, you're not asking, you're demanding when you're ungrateful, aren't you? Isn't it true? <laughs> when are we most demanding? When we feel that we've been wrong, we feel like, you know, our rights have been denied us. And unthankful people are demanding people, and it is, it is an arrogance. It's an assault on who God is to go before God and say, God, now I've met people that have said, my life is hell. I've had people say that. That's a statement that boggles my mind. It, honestly, I have a very, very difficult time wrapping my... I, I look at their circumstances, and I think you have no idea what hell is. Your, your, your circumstances perhaps are difficult, but there's circumstances that if you had the right attitude, you could give thanks for. And instead, this is your response. So thanksgiving is commanded, we see in the Scripture, and it's an attitude that believers are supposed to have when they pray. Um, do you think, are you thankful when you pray? Are you thankful when you pray? Again, thankfulness displaces wrong attitudes, but thankfulness brings us the right spirit when we pray. God, thank you for what you've given me. It's a good place to begin, isn't it? You know, sometimes sometimes it seems that we're more like, God, I don't have what I need. <laughs> now let me just ask you a practical question. Do you enjoy giving? The Bible says that it's more blessed to give than to receive, right? And that's just a principle. Is that principle pretty generally true? Yeah. Matter of fact, let me just ask a question. How many of you I won't call it have reached an area of maturity, but I, I, think it is a, I think it is a stage of maturity. How many of you have come to the realization uh, that giving is actually more fun than receiving? Mm -hmm. I'd a thousand times rather, I'm serious, I'd rather give than get. And I, and I just would. How many of you like to give to someone who isn't thankful? You ever met somebody that is just... They just seem to have the zest for life, and they just seem like they love everything. And you give them something like, oh, "Thank you so much." This, is, how'd you know I wanted? This is exact. I can't. I mean, they're just ecstatic over. You know, you gave them something, and you hope they'd like it. But I mean, it was like they were genuinely thankful. What's your attitude toward giving them something again? You know, if I can find someone who's a good receiver, I want to just keep giving them stuff. Just, I mean, I've met, there are just some people, and I mean, it's just like if you give them something, it just makes their, I mean, there's, I just don't even want to, I just so, this is so wonderful. And, and they're so thrilled because of their gratitude. You ever, met, you ever give something to somebody and they just keep telling you thank you? It's like, you're, you're welcome. Oh, thanks so much. And then they, you leave and they call you. Man, I just want to tell you again, thank you. Thanks for giving that. They write you a letter. They write you a thank you card. Thanks for that. You see them again, they remind you. You forgot you gave it to them. They remind you. I get, you know, you gave that to me. I'm just so thankful for that. I, I don't know about you, but I like giving to people like that. Isn't it surprising that sometimes we think that when we ask God for something, that it's okay for us to not be thankful? The Bible says the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. I think God likes a cheerful getter too. Don't you? And the fact of the matter is that I believe that many times prayer is hindered because of what Brother Andrew read a minute ago because our prayers are not coupled with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is important uh, to get answered to prayer. Who has Colossians uh, 2? Who has Colossians 2? I hope I gave you the right reference for that. Is it Fuji? All right, go ahead. Continue. Read loudly, Fuji, so we can all hear. Continue prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. Okay? Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Something I like to do whenever I'm, whenever I'm studying a verse or particularly doing word studies is look at related words. You know what the number one most, uh, the number one word besides a conjunction like and or uh, so forth, you know what the, what the connected word or the, the word that's used most in the same context with thanksgiving is? Prayer. Isn't it interesting? Uh, could we could we thread the needle a little bit? Could we draw the conclusion that 
A person who prays effectively is a person who is thankful. Now listen, there's nothing about the idea of thanksgiving, set aside and saying, God, we've gotten everything, so thank you, that says we're asking for anything, does it? But it's just interesting to me. In other words, I don't think when I celebrate Thanksgiving, you know, I can't wait until we come together as the body. We're going to ask God for some stuff. Is that what you think when you're thinking about Thanksgiving? Right. Like, hey, we're going to have a Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to, you know, be grateful and, and then we're going to get some stuff from God. It's just interesting, isn't it, when you do a word study in the Scripture that Thanksgiving and prayer are connected. They are complementary words. In other words, they don't mean the same thing. They have completely different meanings, but they're in the same context. So a person who's praying is a person who needs to be thankful when he prays. And so we as believers ought to understand that there's something about gratitude, there's something about thankfulness that gets a hold of God. And you know, I don't know about you, but I'm really thankful for that. You ever just think about the concept that when you praise God and you study His Word on Thanksgiving, you conclude that God likes to answer prayer for thankful people? You think, that isn't even what motivated me. I know I just want to thank God. And then you see that there's this principle or this this character about God that He likes to answer prayer to thankful people. And here I am thanking God. God, thanks for being so good. And God says, I like to give stuff to good people or to, to thankful people. And I just think, God, you're just, you know, it's like, it's like the whipped cream on top of the pie. You know, a slice of pumpkin pie is really good. But you put a little whipped topping on it and it's just <laughs> heavenly. Amen. Okay, now I'm being a little bit silly about that, but isn't it amazing that when you recognize that God's amazing, He's even more amazing? Mm. Isn't that just wonderful? I'm just telling you, I'm looking at that, I'm just saying, you know what, I want to study Thanksgiving, I want to look at Thanksgiving. And I'm like, you know, how can I be thankful? And then it's, it, it's like, God's done this for me, so I don't need anything, so I've already got it. And, I, and then I realize in gratitude, God wants to do more. Now, I'm not telling you, I'm not, I'm not trying to make Thanksgiving all about, you know, manipulate God by th being thankful. That's not the idea. You're not manipulating God. But you're getting hold of a concept about God's character. And friend, I just want to say to you, God is just so good. When I think about what God is and the way that I feel like God ought to be, I realize God is so much better than I feel like He ought to be. You ever just feel like God ought to just smash you? Sometimes I feel like I'm a cockroach and God ought to just put me under His heel. <laughs> I just, you know, God's done so much for me. And, I, and honestly, when, when I've trespassed or when I've failed God, when I've just been self-centered, whenever I've sinned, I feel like God, I've said this to God before, I'm going to stop saying it. Uh, I, I've stopped saying it because, you know, I realize it, does, it doesn't impress God. <laughs> but I've said, God, God, you will just kill me. You know, if God wanted to kill me, He'd have done it already, right? He doesn't need my counsel about how to manage me. He doesn't need, you know, uh, parenting 101 for the Heavenly Father. No, sir. The reality of it is, is that, though I felt that way a lot of times, have you? You ever felt like, okay, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I deserved hell. I mean, I mean it's, there's just no way to say that without almost seeming flippant about it. But it's a serious matter. I deserved hell, but Jesus, Jesus took God's wrath took God's full wrath in my place. And I did not deserve that. And I received Jesus as my Savior. And I got more than just withheld judgment. I became God's child. And I became the recipient, the beneficiary of all His blessings. And I became an heir together with Jesus Christ. I got this elevated status and position, which I'm altogether unworthy of. And everything I learn about God, I just think, God, it's too much. I mean, just, just you know, the hell thing's all I deserved. I didn't deserve that. That's more than I deserved. And then God just keeps piling on all of His goodness. You know, I've said this many times, and I mean this. Sometimes study the Word of God and try to understand how much God loves you. 
Get in the Word of God and study the character of God and just try to figure out, try to grasp how much God loves you. And you'll be amazed at how much God loves you. Not with any merit or self-worthiness, but God just loves you because that's the way He is. And He doesn't just love you a little bit. He loves you an infinite amount of love. It's just amazing how much God loves you. And then when you really start understanding how much God loves you, you realize, I just don't even understand how much He loves me. He loves me more than I can understand. And friend, when you grasp that, you ought to be thankful. And then when you're thankful for what we've seen in the Scripture, God is there just adding on to the things to give you to be thankful for. Hey, a grateful people are blessed people. That's the reality. A grateful people are a blessed people. Uh, let's just look at uh, what, what's Colossians 4 2. Are you there? Go ahead, Joe. prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. Okay, this is a command. Uh, did you notice any words that are connected with thanksgiving? Prayer. Prayer. Isn't that amazing? That just really, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that's occurred to me before, but it just really gets me how connected prayer and thanksgiving are. Can I say to you that if you're not thankful, your prayers most certainly will be hindered? Matter of fact, I've met people and they say they're, they're angry at God because He hasn't answered their prayer. As though He has some sort of obligation toward them to just give them stuff or interfere in their life or others' lives and intervene on their, excuse me, intervene on their behalf. The fact of the matter is, my friend, their problem is the way they pray. We know we, according to the Scripture, when we're talking about prayer, that we need to pray according to God's will. And if we do, He hears us. If we ask anything according to His will. You know that you can have full confidence and assurance that what you're asking, God wants. But if you ask it in a spirit of ingratitude, you're still not asking according to His will. Our prayer is supposed to be coupled with thanksgiving. Okay, we really have one verse for our text today, and I hope... Uh, that you are a student of the Scripture and that Romans chapter 1 is a portion of the Scripture. Could you go back to Romans chapter 1 if you're not there yet? I hope that Romans chapter 1 is a portion of the Scripture that you, that you have um, familiarized yourself with. But if it is not, could I suggest to you Romans for, for reading and for personal Bible study? Romans only has, man, it's 16 chapters, right? 16. 16 yeah, Romans only has 16 chapters. And it literally could be read through at a setting, but you certainly could read through it maybe in, in, a, in two time frames or, or three, just dividing up five chapters at a time. And uh, Romans is a real help for you. It's a book that is about teaching doctrine for Christians. And it, it has a lot of themes, and I'm not going to preach the book of Romans here today. But this is a verse of the Scripture when I think about being thankful or giving thanksgiving that probably when I was about 13 or 14 years old made a major impression on me. Look at verse 21 of Romans. This is talking about people that God's revealed Himself to through creation. And that in verse... Let's look at actually at, at uh, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So God's wrath, and now that's something to be afraid of. In our Revelation study, we're seeing what God's wrath looks like. And it's terrible. It is, I could not, uh, I could not invent or describe what God's wrath should look like. I can only look at what God's wrath is described as in the Scripture and grasp the extent or the scope of God's wrath. God's wrath is terrible, and His wrath is toward the Bible says individuals who hold truth in unrighteousness. And really, if you're going to parse that phrase, hold the truth in unrighteousness, it literally just means somebody who knows there's a God and who refuses to receive Him. In other words, individuals who know that there's a God, the Godhead, and they know what the Gospel is, and they don't receive it, the Bible says God's wrath is directed toward them. And that's a pretty frightening, pretty frightening concept for me. It really terrifies me. But then you see a further description of it. Here's why. In verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it, showed it unto them. Literally.
literally that, well, like Psalm 19 says, that creation declares the glory of God and the heavens show forth His, his, uh, his handiwork or his, the firmament shows His handiwork. Well, oh, I really misquoted that one terribly. Uh, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that what we see from the things that are made are, are being understood the, the character of God or the nature of God. Um, and that's what in verse 20 says, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. In other words, God is not visible to the eye. One day He will be, but right now, God, you cannot see God, but you can see where God was. It's sort of like if you're uh, out in a muddy field and you see some great big mountain lion paw prints. You better start looking around. Or you see some bear tracks. You see some scat from a bear. And you're in a place and there's you see these big prints. And to say, well, there's no bear around. Well, <laughs> You know, you can tell a bear was there because of the prints he made. In other words, the tracks. Well, the Bible says God's print is on the world. Everything that is in the world is obviously designed. I was listening to a guy uh, who's well known, but he's, he's a political philosopher, and he's, he's kind of a, a capitalism guy. But he's not saved, not born again, but he was talking about just in a random interview how that it's really obvious that there's a God that made the world. And he said it's really obvious as well he rejects evolution. He said the world can't be more than I think he said 13,000 years or what he's not a believer, but what he was acknowledging is that God made the world. And he's basically said anybody who tries to deny that is just caught up in their political philosophy and they're not honest. They're not being real about it. Well, that's what the Bible here says. Now, obviously, we know who God is from creation. We know that there's the Godhead. And the Bible says so they're without excuse. And then I want to just come down to that phrase. In verse 21, why are people inexcusable and the recipients of God's wrath? Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. And I'm just amazed these next three words fit into this context. Neither were thankful. Neither were thankful. I don't recommend this for an experiment for you because it is one of those. If you like people being nice, if you like being treated nicely, don't try this, okay? But sometimes find someone who hates God and tell them they ought to be thankful. You ought to just be thankful that God made you and that He's merciful towards you and that He hasn't destroyed you yet and He's allowing you a space for repentance. Have an umbrella because they'll spit on you when they start screaming. One of the things that some of the things that the rhetoric that will come out of their mouth will be think reasons why God doesn't God is evil and God doesn't want any, anything and why and I, I mean they just start saying all kinds of things which reveal they're unthankful. It's amazing that all the things that they say the root of it is ingratitude. You know, people that say they don't believe in God are angry at God for something. It really is true. Uh, I just ask an atheist sometimes, somebody that understands what atheism is and is well enough articulated to know they're not an agnostic or whatever, but they're like really, really a hardcore atheist. And uh, just ask him, so what are you so mad at God about? And listen to them. They'll tell you how terrible Christians are and the atrocities that have are committed on the world by people that have a moral religious standard. They'll tell you about uh, the evil that's committed in the world that God does nothing about. They'll give you a list of things that God is in their debt for. And then ask them, so is there anything you're thankful to God for? <laughs> and you'll realize that gratitude is actually an attitude that you can choose to have or choose not to have. My friend, can I say to you today, God's wrath is against ungrateful people. Hey, there's a motivation for thanksgiving because God's good. It's right to praise Him. There's a motivation for thanksgiving because God loves thankful people and does good things for thankful people. But there's also a motivation for thanksgiving in that a person who's ungrateful, God's wrath is toward. You may be enough of a rebel that you just say, God, I don't care. 
God, I got, I'm not going to thank you. You know, my friend, but that's an attitude of choice, isn't it? See, I've met many people who purport to not believe in God because of, they would say, evidences or circumstances. Ultimately, they're just angry about something or they're upset about something. And ultimately what it comes down to is some of them have had terrible things happen in their lives. Some of them have been through circumstances, through situations that are bad. You say, Pastor, nothing's bad. No, some things that people go through are bad. Evil. Sometimes they've been through things that have been done to them. Sometimes even in the name of God by people who claim to represent God. And what has been done to them is evil. What they don't realize is that God hates evil. And God is able to take a circumstance that's evil and God is able to work it for their good. Hear me now. God will not work an evil circumstance for good to a person who's unthankful. You may be here today and we may be just approaching the surface of a root of bitterness in your life. Something in your life that was evil, something that was wrong, but because of your attitude toward God, He was not able to make it good for you. Mm. Literally, because you're unwilling to say, God, what they did was evil, but you're good, and I'm willing to let you make God thank you for my life. You know, some of us haven't had easy lives. That has nothing to do with whether or not God's good and whether or not God can do something good with it. But if you're not thankful... Can I say to you, God's wrath is against you? Hear me now. Listen carefully. God never did anything wrong. God never did any evil against you. And to respond to God with ingratitude, refusing to be thankful, my friend, doesn't put God in His place. He's in His place. It puts you in your place, in that place, the recipient of God's wrath. And so I want to say to you today that we've seen a positive reason to be thankful. We know it's just right, it's good, but God blesses grateful people. And we've seen a negative reason to be thankful. Unthankful people are the recipients of God's wrath. And if I can't, <laughs> you know, if I can't help you with positive reinforcement, I want to scare you a little bit. Now, being, I really shouldn't make light of something like that, but the reality of it is you ought to be afraid of God's wrath. You ought to be afraid not to be thankful. The last thing, something that we'll mention in the next service, in our, in our praise service, the one after our Sunday school hour, is that being thankful writes us. It fixes things. You'd just be amazed at how much Thanksgiving displaces things. You don't feel good? don't feel right this your your feelings I don't feel like being thankful try it sometime and what you'll discover is that gratitude displaces bad attitudes you don't feel right well give thanks father thank you for what we've learned today thank you for the scripture and God I just pray that for each individual that's here today Lord that we would recognize our need to be thankful to give thanks because of your goodness and because you're good to those that are thankful. But God, I pray as well that you would help us to see our need to be thankful because we actually deserve your wrath, but your wrath isn't directed toward thankful people. Lord, we want to glorify you as God. We want to be thankful for who you are as God. And I just pray that this would make an impression in our hearts and help us to recognize in a permanent way how important it is to give thanks. We pray for Jesus' sake. Amen. Right, we're going to have a short Sunday school period uh, in just a few minutes, but if you want to take a couple of minutes and fellowship a little bit, and right after Sunday school, we're going to start our uh, praise and pie Thanksgiving service.